Welcome back to the wizard shop and it's head gasket time on another Land Rover. Let's get started. Okay, wizard, I know you're used to doing head gaskets on a Land Rover of this era, but are you sure? No, ha ha, fooled you guys. No, this isn't getting head gaskets. The thing runs fine. There's no issues with that. But you believe that that could have been the probability here, didn't you? Because so many of these get blown head gaskets. I would say most of these in the life of the vehicle will have one set of blown head gaskets. All of Ours them. Ours did. Yeah. We've had some before and they all had to have head gaskets done. It's kind of a, a poor design. It's nothing that anyone did other than the way it was designed and it kind of stinks, but it's the way it is. We're gonna look around this vehicle, check it out, talk about some of the features and also why it's here. Let's go ahead and start up front. So this is a 99 Land Rover Discovery, a Discovery 1 to be exact. And it's got lots of really cool modifications to it. It looks like something you'd see in South Africa or even in Africa, in the deserts, all over the different places where really rugged vehicles exist. It looks very similar to the G-Wagon that's sitting next to it, the styling and everything. That one's Hoovy's G55 AMG over there. We've got a few small things to fix on it and it'll be out of here. But if I was going to South Africa on a safari or something like that, I would take this. Simply because if you break down, which you probably will no matter what vehicle you choose, there's gonna be shops and parts and everything available, ready to go for one of these. Very likely for the Mercedes as well, but you don't see a whole lot of G-Wagons in the middle of nowhere. Those are pretty, they look nice. They're for mall cruising. This one, it means business. It looks like it means business. I apologize for the noise in the background. We're getting our really sweet bin pack lifts installed. So, not much I can do about that. I apologize ahead of time for that. So this one's in pretty good shape. You can see a little light that the customer has taped up here. He's tried to self-diagnose the problem that we're going to talk about in a minute. But you can see that there was some modification here to fit this snorkel. But it's not dented or beat up. It's in pretty good shape. It's got sliders on it, which is nice. So if you come down on a rock or something, it doesn't tear up the sheet metal. And you'll notice back here it's really short. That denotes there's a Discovery 1. A Discovery 2 would have this window quite a bit longer. I prefer a Discovery 1 because there's less departure angle. There's not as much hanging back here like there is on a Discovery 2. And I really like the looks of these. I like the Discovery 1s. I love them. This one has a nice step. It has a ladder to get up top for any luggage or any spare tires or whatever you might have up there when you go on your safari. And one of the things I like about Discoveries is it opens like a car door, a huge car door. It's not one of these hatches that go up and hit you in the face. It opens wide and you can get large items in and out of here really easily. It even has little seats for an emergency, an adult could sit there, but really that'd be for little kids or something. So is that why you like QB so much, is that it's got a big side door that opens like I, that? I love the side doors that open that way. I like them a lot. And this is the cutest little seat. Yep. Has a aftermarket bumper on it. Very nice. This was very tastefully modded, as they say. It's very well done. It doesn't look gaudy. It doesn't look... It looks like something you can actually use. And that's what I really like about it. Again, it's not dented or beat up. It's in really good shape. I really, really like this color too. And it's got a big ARB bull bar on it. Some nice little lights. Let's go ahead and look in the interior and then we'll get under the hood and talk about why it's here. So this thing has almost 200,000 miles on it and it's still going strong. These things can go a long ways as long as they're maintained. The dash is in good shape. I love the design of these dashes. It's just so cool. You don't see any American or even Asian car that has this styling. I don't know what it is. I can't really point to one single thing, but the combined design of this dash, I just really, really love it. it has cup holders here. This is our transfer case, high, low, 
and lock. There's our shifter, all of our power windows and power seats, everything is here. And here's our power seats here that are usually always broken. Those things are always broken on Discoveries, it seems like. Like that, Whoa. Mrs. Wizard? You can move me around. Yep. Here we go. Here's our ashtray. It is missing the radio. And this is a cool cup holder, too. If I can get it to come out. Well, I better leave it alone. I don't want to break it if something's yeah, wrong with it. Yeah, they get gummed up with pop. It looks like the radio's missing out of it. I'm not too sure what's going on. It may be because one of the reasons it's here, actually the reason it's here, is sometimes it won't start, or sometimes going down the road it's flashing the anti-theft, and it's a very easy solution to this. I think the customer has been really fighting this a lot. Looking at the radio, you can see that the clamshells are off the steering column. He's been looking at the sensor for the key, wiring, We've really been fighting this pretty hard. You guys are going to flip your lid when I show you what was wrong with it. And the headliner looks like it's come down at some point, which they usually do in Discoveries. Looks like he just put some sort of truck bed coating or something on it and made it a durable surface. And I really like that. I think that's a good idea. He did a good job. Yeah, it's, it's a nice rig. I really like this thing. He did supply this giant service manual that I won't be needing it. Now let's go ahead. Wait, wait, wait. You missed something, Car Wizard. What is it? The iconic Land Rover smell. Oh, yeah. It's the leather smell or the padding in the seats. I'm not sure what it is, but it has like a... It's like leather mixed with foam or something. It's, it's really it's, weird. It's very mm. iconic, you know, older Land Rover. Almost like an old Mercedes. Yeah. Very yeah. similar. It's not a bad smell. I kind of like it. Let's go ahead and head under the hood. So, like I kind of jokingly said at the beginning of this, that it has a head gasket problem, it doesn't. But there was a time when I first met Tyler of Hoovy's Garage. He had a small dealership and he was trying to make a profit and trying to see what he can do to bring money in. And he found out something that was really sweet, a deal that we both had going. He would find these at auction on purpose with blown head gaskets. He would say, does this one have blown head gaskets? And they'd say, yes. And he'd say, yes, that's the one I want. And they'd be like, what? Oh, okay. And he would bid on these things and get them for like 800 bucks or grand. And they're in really good shape. They just have blown head gaskets. He would bring them to me, 1500 to two grand, depending on what was wrong. That was a special pricing for him. I wouldn't do that price today for a customer. That was a dealer pricing that he had. 1500 or two grand, I could get his head gaskets fixed, get it back together with resurfaced heads and everything, and he could resell it. He could double his money. Say, so the head gasket service has been done on this. You don't have to worry about that. The rest of the car is in good shape. Four, five, six grand, he'd sell them all day long. I think we went through 14 of them, a lot of them. So I know these pretty good. If you buy one of these that has blown head gaskets, or if you own one that starts to blow the head gaskets, it's not going to right away destroy anything, but you don't want to keep driving it. You want to get it into the shop and get it fixed as soon as you can. If you overheat these really bad, they have steel cylinder liners in an aluminum block that can sink and completely ruin the engine. Also, you can warp the heads so bad that you'll have to get new heads, So, because it's all aluminum. You're going to know that you have a blown head gasket when there's no heat coming out of the heater, but yet your engine's overheating. Or it could blow coolant all over the place. Let's go ahead and open the hood and I'll show you another tip. So here we have the 4 liter Rover V8. Some of you guys have seen the Triumph TR8 that was in here. It's basically the same motor. He has. The guy, Bill, that owns that car has a 3.5 Rover V8 in his Triumph TR8. And this is a 4 liter Rover V8, which also came from Buick originally. These are good engines. They're, they're decent power. I really like them. They're easy to work on. They just have a bad wrap because of the head gasket problem. Here's our coolant reservoir. Let's go ahead and take a look in there. Nice and green. Nice and green. 
Now if you open this up and it's just got gray and black sludge just filled in here, that's also a sign of a blown head gasket. But like I said, these engines are really pretty robust. I like them. Once you get the accessories off, the intake off, and the exhaust manifolds off, which you can see are easy to get to, it is not a hard job to do head gaskets on these. Not hard at all. Our first Land Rover we had, Mrs. Wizard, I did it in the backyard, remember? Oh yeah, did I the really head... liked that one. Yeah, it was I a white that one. That yeah, I missed that one. That was a very easy to drive, iconic white, yeah. Maybe we should find another one someday. Well, we did sell it to somebody that's here in town. Maybe it's still here. Who knows? So, other than the head gasket issues, these are actually decent vehicles. They're very nice. Now let's talk about why it's here. This customer's been fighting this for a while. While he's driving down the road, or while his wife's driving down the road in this, it'll start flashing the lights like the alarm's going off. He had to unhook the horn because it was annoying. It'd start honking. Occasionally, whenever he tried to start it, the anti-theft light would flash, and it, it wouldn't start. <laughs> kind of leave him stranded. He's tried a starter. He's tried various different items. He even hooked a light up to the starter to see that it's getting juice. And it was, it's always getting juice, but that's not the problem. After all the headache and everything he's gone through, let me show you why it was acting up. Let's take a look at the battery. So this large red wire right here, that goes directly to the starter. And you can crank all day and it'll have good juice to it. But these little wires right here, those power the ECU, they power anti-theft, all those different things like that. And when this car came in, this is what I found. Look at that, guys. This one, too. And they look tight, too. So these things are finger loose. So that means at any given time, if this doesn't make perfect contact, or if you're driving down the road and hitting bumps, these wires are doing this. And that just freaks the hell out of the anti-theft system. It says, what the hell is going on here? Why am I getting intermittent power like that? It thinks it's being tampered with, and it triggers the anti-theft. Same over here. Look at that, guys. ECM's obviously freaking out, and all they can do is throw a code. Yep, it resets the ECM. It loses power, gets power. Actually, in Junior Mint found this problem. And before he did anything, it would act up pretty regularly. It wouldn't start, the anti-theft light, all kinds of things. He went and tightened these up and made them nice and snug, and it solved it. It starts every time now. We can go out and drive it, no issues. It runs perfect now, all because of two loose bolts. Let me tighten these up real quick, and we'll close the hood. Here we go. So it took us 45 minutes or so, maybe even an hour to find that because we're checking fuses, we're checking this, we're scanning for codes, and we finally found that. I'm not going to charge him a full hour, just charge him half an hour to find out what's wrong. And also, we're going to put a new clamp on. I tighten that one up just for now in case we need to move the vehicle, but we're going to order a good clamp and put a new clamp on, and that'll solve this issue altogether. But the moral of the story here, guys, is if you're having issues with your car, always check the little stuff first, the simple stuff, because this customer is going to have a $125 bill. After tax, sales tax, it's going to be $150 to tighten two bolts. Now, we did check it over. We didn't find any other issues. Now, obviously, the head gasket's fine. But to tighten two bolts, it's going to cost this guy quite a bit. And the guy's totally cool with it. He's like, hey, that's great. I'm glad it was something simple. But it's very easy for a customer to get very angry in this situation and actually hit themselves on the head and like, you dummy, you just cost yours. Why didn't you check those bolts? And they're thinking to themselves, why didn't you check those bolts? Don't do that to yourself. If, you're, if you go out and you go to start your car and it just clicks, come check the battery terminals. Don't just call a tow truck and bring it to the mechanic. Check the little stuff first. You might save yourself a pretty hefty bill. So this is a really nice Land Rover, and I think the customer actually owns another one, or maybe even more than two or three. I don't know how many they own, but I'm really happy they brought it here. I enjoy 
working on Land Rovers. You guys know that I love Land Rovers, Range Rovers, Jaguars. I really love the English stuff. Bentleys. If you talk to Car Ninja at German Motor Works in Wichita, he will say, I hate English cars. And he sends them to me. And I send him the piece of trash BMWs. I just kick them out of here. Get out of here! I don't want that junk in my shop. So, again, make sure you check the simple stuff, guys. But I thought before it's gone, I'll give you guys a video on it and show you how simple sometimes the fix can be and how you can really be hard. Don't be so hard on yourself. Just move on. It's fixed. So this guy does get the assurance that nothing else is wrong. We've checked. There's no codes. There's no other issues. So he's ready to go as soon as we get a good solid terminal on there. But I'm thinking maybe we need to look for one of these, Mrs. Wizard. I think so. I think they're really cool. We need to find one with blown head gaskets, though. Uh, really? Uh, then don't look at my marketplace search history. Oh, you've been looking at them? Maybe. Oh, okay. Hey, well, if I find one, then I can go ahead and snag it. I might beat you to it, though. Oh, you might beat me to it. Yes. Hey, that's great. Make sure it's white or silver or dark gray. They don't make many other colors besides those. Well, sure there are. There's, green there's, red, there's red, yellow all kinds of different colors. So if you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop, they're all listed in my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. These are a lot of the tools that we use in the shop that saves us a lot of headaches and a lot of trouble. I've showed you guys in some of my wizard tips videos some of the tools to how you can take a 30 minute diagnosis and turn it into a 30 second diagnosis. Just with some of the tools that I have for sale. So yes, I do make a small cut, but it saves you a lot of high blood pressure headaches. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. We've got so many sweet projects coming, guys. And make sure you also check your subscriptions. We've been hearing people that get inadvertently unsubscribed to channels when they didn't even want to unsubscribe. You don't want to miss out on the great content. We've got many more cool things coming down the pipe, guys. Thanks for watching.